A few weeks ago, a groundbreaking discovery was made at the archaeological site of Karahan Tepe in Turkey of a T-shaped pillar boasting a human face. And it's the first of its kind found at a Tash Tepeler site. Tash Tepeler being a wide set of Neolithic sites that Karahan Tepe is a part of. We have T-shaped pillars at such sites, for example at Gobekli Tepe, Nevale Chore, and even Karahan Tepe itself, that feature carved arms and hands on the shafts of the pillars, and this has led to archaeologists interpreting the top pieces as human heads, although they are faceless. Now, we have a pillar with a face. This is a really exciting discovery and has been the topic of many discussions online since it was announced. And on X, I saw that some people have proposed that this could be a case of pareidolia. This means that we're just making out a human face from random marks. So I thought I'd dedicate an episode to discussing this newly discovered pillar. I'm Adam Archaeologist, your go-to informant on everything archaeology, and today I'll dive into the fascinating world of Neolithic southeastern Turkey and look at facial depictions at Tash Tepeler sites to give my answer on whether this is a human face or not. Karahan Tepe is an archaeological site in southeastern Turkey, roughly 55 kilometers from the present-day city of Şanlı Urfa, and as I mentioned, it is part of a wider set of archaeological sites in the region we call the Tash Tepeler. This also includes the more famous site of Gobekli Tepe, and you can see other Tash Tepeler sites here in this map too. Chronology-wise, Karahan Tepe belongs to the Neolithic, specifically the earlier phase we call the Pre-Potter Neolithic. And the Neolithic period in general is one of the most important periods in the human story because it was when people were transitioning from hunting and gathering lifeways to becoming more sedentary communities. Karahan Tepe and other Tash Tepler sites are providing crucial evidence for furthering our understanding of this transition, but that's for another time. At the site, archaeologists have uncovered communal structures, as well as structures that appear to have served as dwellings. So this wasn't a place that only served a ritualistic function. Karahan Tepe was a settlement where people also carried out their daily tasks. More than 30 small huts thought to have served a domestic function were actually found this year. Their discovery was announced shortly after the T-shaped pillar with the face. So excavations at the site have been quite fruitful this year. A domestic function has been ascribed to them because things like hearths, grinding stones, and likely storage spaces have been found within them. But things get interesting when we consider the fact that these small dwellings are arranged around one of the communal buildings at the site. So it looks like different aspects of life, ritual versus domestic, were all intertwined at the site, a theme that appears at other Tash Tepeler sites too. At Karahan Tepe, this tall anthropomorphic statue and this human face carved to the bedrock of structure AB are two of the better known finds at the site. But pillars, many of them T-shaped, are one of the most important architectural features at the site. T-shaped pillars are actually a feature of Tash Tepeler sites more generally. They haven't been found at all Tash Tepeler sites, but they have been found at many, for example at Gobekli Tepe, Karahan Tepe, Nevale Chore, Saiburch, Hamzan Tepe, Sefer Tepe. Some boast elaborate carvings, like Pillar 43 at Gobekli Tepe, some feature carvings of human arms and hands, as I've already mentioned, and some are completely bare. Never before have we found a human face on any of the pillar tops, so this discovery at Karahan Tepe is a first. Now, why has this been interpreted as a face and not just a case of pareidolia? Remember, pareidolia is a psychological phenomenon where our minds perceive a familiar pattern or image, often a human face, out of random stimuli. Are we just making out a face where none was carved? That's unlikely in this specific context, because the face actually looks similar to the eyes and noses we see on statues and depictions of humans carved into stone at Karahan Tepe and other Tash Tepeler sites. We may not have previously identified faces on the tops of T-shaped pillars at these Tash Tepeler sites to compare with, but we do have them in other formats. I'll show a few examples. Here's a facial depiction from Karahan Tepe itself. This person or anthropomorphic figure features ears and a mouth, so there's no doubt it's a human face. And as you can see, its eyes and nose look very similar to the T-pillar's carving. Both have prominent noses and deep-set eyes or brow ridges. Even the eyes and nose of the famous protruding face from one of Karahan Tepe's communal structures bear similarities to our pillar here. Here is a limestone human head found at Gobekli Tepe. Again, we see a prominent nose and deep-set eyes or brow ridges. Here's another example. This is a large mask from Gobekli Tepe. 
And here is a drawing of the so-called Birdman statue from Navale Chore. I think these suffice to show that the face on the T-shaped pillar follows this wider trend in the depiction of human faces at Tash Tepler sites. We have a couple examples here that are definitely human faces because they also have their mouth and ears carved. And since the eyes and noses on these facial depictions resemble the eyes and noses on the heads that only feature eyes and noses, then these must be human faces as well. And when you have all these Tash Tepler faces resembling the new pillar uncovered at Karahan Tepe, it's hard to say that this is anything but a depiction of a human face. Now, this may not be the most elaborate Tash Tepler pillar ever discovered, but it is still a really exciting discovery because, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, before this pillar was uncovered, T-shaped pillars that boast carvings of human arms and hands on the shafts have been found, and so the tops of the pillars have been interpreted as human heads, even though they are faceless. These T-shaped pillars of the Tash Tepler are thus have been described by archaeologists as anthropomorphic. Finding a pillar with a face on it strengthens this interpretation, that the pillars are stylized representations of humans, or at least human-like forms. Whether they represent actual people, perhaps revered ancestors, or if they were maybe early representations of gods, nobody knows. But what we know is that at least a good portion of these pillars, shape-wise, represent humans or human-like individuals. Now, this discovery doesn't tell us anything about the other carvings that we see on some of the T-shaped pillars, the animals and other symbols. But analyzing how these images tie into the anthropomorphic theme would be interesting. And regardless, the discovery of this pillar is important because it adds another layer of knowledge on the Tash Tepler phenomenon. Any new archaeological discovery is significant because it expands our understanding of a given topic. It can either reinforce or even throw into question a previous interpretation, or it can also tell us something completely new about the past, something that we didn't know before. In the case of the pillar here, it reinforces the interpretation that the T-shaped pillars are anthropomorphic, and it's also telling us something new because it shows us that, sometimes, ancient Southeast Anatolians did decide to actually carve a human face on the head of a pillar. I wonder how many more pillars with human faces will be found as excavations progress at the Tash Tepler sites. That's it for this episode. I'd love to know what your thoughts on the pillar are, so feel free to drop a comment below. Subscribe for more cool content by your go-to informant on everything archaeology, Madam Archaeologist.